one. So this week, we've had a couple of big leaks about the Galaxy S21, and it looks incredible. We've got more news of in-display camera sensors, larger selfie sensors, an incredible new chipset, and we've also got news of a removable battery in the Galaxy S21. Before we get started though, give this video a like if you're looking forward to the Galaxy S21, and let me know in the comments what your favorite phone is. So we'll start today's update with the news of the new system on chip to power the Galaxy S21, and that is of course the Exynos 992. As with every year, it's expected that in some markets they'll be using the Snapdragon 875, and in others it will be the Exynos 992. While many are usually disappointed by the Exynos equivalent, the new 992 is looking very promising and may be a contender for Snapdragon. The Exynos 992 is a 5nm chipset, and it will of course be more powerful as well as more efficient than its predecessor. It's going to feature ARM's latest Cortex A78 cores and the Mali G78 GPU. ARM claims that the new generation A78 cores and the GPU are 20% more efficient than the predecessor and the GPU will have a 25% performance increase. It will of course be the first 5 nanometer chipset fabrication and reports are stating that it's ready to begin mass production. And as most of you will have already heard, Samsung are expected to debut the in-display selfie camera in the Galaxy S21. Not only are they reported to be using their first in-display sensor, but they're also making it much larger. Now this does make sense of course, if it can be hidden, then there's no harm in it being larger to allow more light to reach the sensor. Reports are stating that we'll be getting a half inch sensor on the Galaxy S21, and to put that into perspective, the S20 has a 1 over 3.2 inch sensor, and the S20 Plus uses a 1 over 2.65 inch. The in-display selfie camera on the Galaxy S21 is also reported to have both optical image stabilization and electronic image stabilization, meaning that we should get some very stable footage. Of course, on the rear, Samsung are reportedly going to be implementing their 150 megapixel isocell sensor in the Galaxy S21, and they're actually going to be dropping the laser autofocus. The 150 megapixel nonocell sensor is reportedly going to be mass produced at the end of the year, which of course is perfect timing to be included in the S21. The largest model, the Galaxy S20 Ultra, is reportedly going to be using a pentacamera setup, so we can expect another photography powerhouse from Samsung. The 150 megapixel sensor is reportedly going to be coupled with a 64 megapixel telephoto, a 16 megapixel ultra wide, a 12 megapixel macro and a 3D time of flight depth sensor. Unfortunately, we don't know the exact sensors being used just yet or what level of zoom the telephoto will provide. Finally though, we've got rumors of a removable battery in the Galaxy S21. Now unfortunately here, I've got good news and some bad. Yes, Samsung are working on removable batteries, but it seems it won't be for the Galaxy S21. Samsung have reportedly began producing a model that will have a removable battery, but it's for the entry level A01e and not their flagships. Personally, I don't see it being something that is going to come back as most people prefer the water resistance. Apart from that though, we've of course had a few other leaks on the Samsung Galaxy S21. For my regular viewers, you guys would have already seen this, so go ahead and skip to the next video. But if you're new here, then don't forget to hit subscribe and we'll get right into it. When it comes to the actual design of the Samsung Galaxy S21, the truth is it really doesn't matter too much right now. While there may be a design in mind and a prototype already out there at Samsung, it won't have been finalized just yet, so it could of course still change. We can however get information on hardware and specs that are unlikely to change. The first actual leak we have comes from well-known leaker Ice Universe, and he published a tweet last week to say that Samsung is considering an in-display camera sensor on the Samsung Galaxy S21. He advises that they're evaluating the feasibility of the technology, and if it's ready, then it will be in the Galaxy S21. Everyone has been very excited for this new technology and it's always been expected that 2021 is going to be the year it's delivered. We can finally have a full screen display without motorized parts and the only thing that people are worried about is the additional cost that it might bring. We've also got reports suggesting that this in-display selfie camera is going to be using a half inch selfie sensor with a 48 megapixel resolution. 
The Samsung Galaxy S21 will of course be using the new and improved next generation OLED display. We've had patents filed for curved displays with protruding buttons and we've now got a new patent showcasing a very curved display. The patent was discovered by Let's Go Digital and it was rendered by Concept Creator. It shows a display that's not only curved at both edges, but it also has curves at the top and the bottom. While it does look similar to the new design from Huawei, it's actually very different as Huawei's is just the glass and not the display itself. The patent is for the screen to curve on all edges and it includes the rounded off corners. Now we know it is intended for a Galaxy as it was listed as a Galaxy smartphone display and it's also logged as that on the World Intellectual Property Office database. Its full screen design means that it will of course have an in-display fingerprint scanner and it helps fuels reports that the in-display selfie camera will be there as well. Some people are speculating that this is of course for the Note 20 but many believe it's for the Galaxy S. S21. Next we've got news of an incredible 150 megapixel nanocell camera to debut in the Galaxy S21. They already broke records with their latest 108 megapixel sensor that we saw in the S20 Ultra and now they're pushing the boundaries even further. The new 150 megapixel camera is going to be launching towards the end of this year which will most likely be too late for the Note range and this means that we could well have it debuting in the Galaxy S21. We also had patents filed by Samsung for multiple technologies that could also be present in the Galaxy S21. We had a patent for a holographic projector to produce stereoscopic images in the air, almost like a 3D hologram. While it could be a cool feature, I think it's just too gimmicky and not something we'll see in the S21. We also had patents filed for a lot of sensors that were initially thought to be in the Galaxy Note 20, but they are now looking very unlikely. This means if they are to go ahead with these plans, then we could well see them in the S21 instead. First we've got mention of an electromyography or EMG sensor. Now EMG is used to measure electrical signals generated by muscles and can be used to assess the health of a muscle and the nerve cells that control them. We also have mention of an electroencephalogram sensor or EEG sensor. This is again to measure electrical signals but instead of muscles EEG sensors are for measuring our brain activity. Finally we have the electrocardiogram or ECG sensor and this measures electrical activity of the heart and help diagnose abnormal heart rhythms. While we always get many patents filed which do fuel rumours of new features, I believe if any are to be true then it's going to be the new sensors that we see in the S21. While a holographic projector would be an incredible feature, it would be very limited in its use and not something I can see them doing. Fitness and health are very popular at the moment and used commonly in today's smartphone peripherals so I think this would be a great fit for the S21. Now of course all of that is estimation and speculation from patents, Samsung file a lot of patents to protect their ideas and it doesn't mean it's definitely going to be happening. One thing we can be certain of though is that the Galaxy S21 is of course going to come in a few different sizes to suit all consumers, it's going to have the latest Samsung display along with the best hardware and cameras they can source at the time. Going by the current releases we can expect them to stick with the rectangular shaped camera module on the rear and they're going to provide 3-6 cameras depending on variants. When it comes to the chipset they'll of course be using the Snapdragon 875 which is a 5 nanometer system on chip. It's going to provide better performance and efficiency over the current chipsets used and unfortunately as usual this is only going to be for certain regions including North America and for most markets globally we'll be getting the equivalent Exynos chip that doesn't actually perform as well. We'll likely get the usual choices of 128, 256 or 512 internal storage and this will of course be UFS 3.1. When it comes to RAM we'll likely be getting a choice of 12 or 16 gigs of RAM which is still more than we're ever going to need. There will likely be a hybrid SIM tray to support micro SD cards but there won't be a 3.5mm audio jack. It's going to have all of the usual sensors and we can of course expect an in-display fingerprint scanner. Until the design and the screen sizes are finalised, we unfortunately can't estimate the battery capacity but expect slight improvements on the predecessors and of course wireless and reverse wireless charging. As always it's going to be IP68 water resistant and when it comes to price it's no doubt going to be expensive. Samsung surprised us with just how high the Galaxy S20 Ultra launched at so it's going to be interesting to see if they create another very premium device or work at bringing this cost down. 
Of course, there's unfortunately a lot of speculation right now, but as soon as we receive any solid leaks, I'll be sharing them with you guys straight away.